got eight rookie mistakes that you don't need to make because I did, starting now. Nobody wants to look like a rookie out in the water, or even worse, getting injured or something even more tragic. So I'm just gonna skip over the part where I beg you for likes and subs, and we're gonna get this party started. So every day I get people writing me through my YouTube page asking me questions about kayaks that they're thinking about purchasing, which is no problem at all. I love it when you guys reach out and ask questions. But the questions come so often, and I know a lot of you watching this video are just now getting into kayak fishing, which is great, because this video is just for you. First, let's talk about the first time you take your kayak out, you take that bottle of champagne, you break it over the bow, you strap that sucker to your car, or you put it in a trailer, and you head out to your body of water. Well, this is where the first three mistakes come into play. Mistake number one is going out on a crowded waterway. You'll be putting yourself at a disadvantage if you head out to a place that is full of boats. It's already going to be a lot to figure out and not adding jet skis and bass boats and tubers and skiers and weight to the mix. It's the equivalent of getting behind the wheel and hey let's go drive in LA traffic. You're not doing yourselves any favors. In fact you might be putting yourself a little risk that you didn't need to. Help yourself out a bit find yourself a nice quiet local pond and go out there and get your bearings before you head out on a crowded waterway. All right, mistake number two. Many kayakers purchase their kayak and what do they do? They go to the most dangerous body of water there is, the river. And the reason it's dangerous is because there's a ton of hazards out there. You got currents, rapids, holes, hydraulic, eddies, pour overs. You got wave trains, wing dams, sweepers, strainers, undercut banks, dams, submerged edges, stump fields, sandbars, entrapments, bridges, and traffic wake. Hey Darren, I get your point have a very healthy respect for the river. So it'll benefit you to not go on the river the first time you get your kayak. I don't think I've ever pulled my community on this. How many of you have river fish? Please let me know in the comments below. Mistake number three. You're so excited, you just bought your kayak and you're willing to kayak just about anywhere, which means you're willing to launch from just about anywhere. Well, I highly recommend you to not launch from a dock a rocky shoreline, a mucky shoreline, or a steep shoreline. Some of us who've been kayaking for a bit might have forgotten what it's like to get into a kayak for the first time. It's like riding a bike. It takes a little bit of balance to get that adjusted, and every kayak has its own nuances. So do yourself a favor, try launching in a shallow area so you don't end up falling, you don't end up hurting yourself, you don't end up dumping your gear in eight feet of water. All right, mistake number four. You've been thinking about this day for a long time. You purchased your kayak, and you have Saturday morning reserved for the maiden voyage. However, the weather is not cooperating and what you're seeing in the weather report is 10 mile per hour winds and cold. If you're new to kayak fishing, guys, do yourself a favor, stay home. The reality is it's probably not gonna be too enjoyable for you. The wind can be tough, why kayak, and if, especially if you wanna go fishing and you're gonna be fighting it all day. Two, you should know some things about fishing in the wind. I just finished up a video, how windy is too windy for kayak fishing, and I kind of geek out and I start talking about how to deduce the wind speed by how the wind affects the things around you. I'll throw that video up at the end of this video. And three, it's probably gonna be dangerous for you as you likely don't have the gear for immersion and you likely haven't been able to practice your deep water re-entry. All right, mistake number five, don't believe bad logic. I don't need to wear my life jacket. I've been swimming since I was a young whippersnapper. I can swim, I don't need to wear my life jacket is bad logic. You don't need your life jacket when you can swim. You need it when you're unable to swim. Like when another boat doesn't see you, when you pass out, when your muscles lock up, or when you go into a panic. These scenarios are not common, I get it. But it only takes one weird scenario to manifest itself to wish that you had one on. I'll be real with you. Back in 2011, I swam 50.6 nonstop miles across Lake Michigan without touching a boat. If there's anybody that can say, hey, I could swim, it's me, but I still wear a life jacket. All right, mistake number six. This one's a bad idea. So you just purchased a kayak or a fishing kayak, and the first thing you do is plan a multi-day trip. Ooh, yeah, that trip's gonna be one that you regret. Just ease 
into it. I recommend starting out with a couple hour trip, make some mental notes, make some adjustments back home, then go out for a few more hours. I remember when I started out kayak fishing, I can't tell you how sore I was. I was fishing in angles and I was using muscles that I haven't used in a very long time. It took me a really long time to dial that in. All right, if you're still tracking with me, help me out. Please hit that like button. We're moving on to mistake number seven. Assuming that nothing will go wrong. Oh, by all means, hope that nothing goes wrong. You can even pray to the Lord that nothing goes wrong, but I wouldn't assume that nothing is going to go wrong. In fact, if you're new, I would have a plan of attack in case something does go wrong. Here's some tips to take in consideration if you're new to the sport. Number one, stay near to shore within a swimmable distance. Two, I always like to take some walkie talkies with me, especially if I'm kayak fishing, you might be out of sight. Always have a phone with you, always like to keep an extra battery on board. I have a small little horn I keep in the kayak crate. Also, you can carry a whistle. You know the saying, plan for the worst, hope for the best. All right, this is a mistake number eight. Guys, I hiked the Appalachian Trail back in 2008, and this is something that I learned that is transferable to the kayak fishing world. Unless you're fishing in hot climates with no chance of extreme weather, then cotton is your worst enemy. It's a highly absorptive material that can take up to 27 times its weight in water. It's heavy, it's slow drying, and it loses all its insulation properties when wet. Something is no bueno when you are fishing in cold weather. Do yourself a favor and avoid cotton when you are kayak fishing. If you like this video, you'll love this one. Nine beginner kayak fishing mistakes I made and you can avoid right there. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video or out in the water. Bye.